First off, I'd like to say, despite what that slide says, something that I wish I had known is, despite this being the cleanest thing I have in my wardrobe right now, it's not the wisest move to wear a dress when you have to hop upstairs and also get mic'd up. Uncomfortable for everyone. Um, <laughs> So, my name's Lynn, and I'd like to start off with asking, who here in the audience is 20? Awesome. 21? Okay. So, I'm currently aged 20, and I have that fun, fun time of planning my 21st, which is in less than two months. And turning 21, aside from not understanding why we as Australians place a whole lot of cultural significance on an event which is really one night that costs the birthday person a lot of money, it also means that it's technically my last year of university, and it's that year where I'll go to class, I'll go out with my parents, I'll see friends, and the one question that I get asked all the time is, what are you going to do when you grow up, Lynn? Where to next? What are you going to become? What are you going to do? And now I figured out, adults ask this question because they like to figure out what we young people are all about. They like to say, oh, if you want to be a doctor, you must be a hard worker. You must be willing to put in those seven years at university. Uh, unfortunately for them, my answer makes me sound like a bit of a mess. My answer is always, well, I don't really know. Um, maybe I don't have to grow up. Maybe I can uh, play make-believe for the rest of my life. And most adults look at me with a blank face and just go, oh, that's, that's great, Lynn. But the reason why I've been more confused sounding in answering this question is not actually because I don't know what I want to do but it's because I believe that I should live somewhat like an academic, and that doesn't mean churning out lots of papers that no one necessarily understands, uh, which is how most of my uni essays read, but rather academics generally take sabbatical years. So sabbaticals are every seven years, academics take a year off in order to research their next book and figure out exactly what their next big project, their next big academic title will be. And I don't see why we should be any different. I think that it's important for every seven years to pause in life, reflect over the last seven or so years, and think about what went well, what didn't go well, and reevaluate where to next. And I'm really excited that next year, 2012, is the first time I'm actually going to be able to do this. I'm going to be able to think and go, where can I actually be most effective? Do I want to continue on this path for the next seven years, or do I not want to? And now, one of the things that's happened as a result is I've been asking people for advice. And the worst advice that I've gotten is you should go and read those books that have in the title, oh, I wish I knew when I was your age, 20, 19, 25, any arbitrary number really, X, Y, and Z. And that's completely redundant because time is one of those things that can't change. There's nothing I can do to stop that uh, clicking downtime thing that's actually really scaring me now. I'm not going to look to that side of the stage. There's nothing that I can do <laughs> to influence time. There's nothing that I can do to change time. Time isn't something that we can be bound by. It's not something that speeds up. It's not something that slows down. The only thing that can change is I might start speaking faster in a couple of minutes. Time doesn't change, but over the last five years, I was essentially a teenager. And what I realized was anytime people spoke about me, they always used to mention my age. It used to be, oh, Lynn, at the age of 16, did. No offense, great bio, thank you very much. But it always used to be Lynn, when she was this age, did that. Lynn, when she was that age, did this. And that sort of actually caused me a lot of stress in the past few years, because it made me wonder, well, what happens if I'm 52 when I do exactly the same thing and achieve exactly the same outcomes? Does that mean what I did actually is worth less? And I've realized now that I'm aging and can no longer be a teenager is really it traumatized me for a great number of years. You might laugh, but much, I never used to celebrate my birthday as a result because it was really just me aging. Um, what it reminded me was that, well, no, my actions and the values and the outcomes that are produced are not dependent on exactly how old I am. We live in a generation and a society where we love talking about the youngest person to do something, the oldest person to do something. But what about the middle? The middle is what makes up our lives. We're all going to live until we're approximately 81 as Australians. 81, unless you're the 81-year-old to do something or you're like the one-year-old to do something, you've got a whole lot of middle years to fill up with something. And that's my generation. I come from a generation where currently 50% of the world's population are aged under 27 years. By the end of this month, we're projected to hit 7 billion people. That means by the end of this month, we'll have 3.5 billion people aged under 27. But we are the generation that are aware of big global issues that are currently happening. We know that climate change is happening. We know that the carbon dioxide within the air is currently increasing. We know that there are 1.4 billion people living in extreme poverty. 
These are the things that my generation are aware of. 3.5 billion people are growing up with this information readily accessible to all of us. And what that means is that's something that in some ways I sometimes wish I didn't know. That's something that the generation before me didn't know about. And that's why we hear about midlife crises. People work their entire lives. They go to high school, they go to university, they get a job, they make partner. Bam, they hit 40 and then they have a midlife crisis and they wonder, wow, I'm on this planet, but exactly what am I here to do? I've just spent the last 20 odd working adult years of my life essentially working for the man, doing something that doesn't always have a whole lot of purpose. And then that's when they decide, maybe I should start giving back. But something that in some ways I'm burdened with, but I'm also presented with an opportunity, is the fact that I'm part of the generation that knows about a lot of the big issues that we actually have to change. A lot of the big issues that aren't right within society. And that means that I'm not satisfied and I'm not content with just going to university, just going out there and becoming a lawyer and then working at a big corporate firm and seeing what happens. That's not something that I'm capable, I'm capable of doing. I need to be working with something that has purpose. I need to know that my actions are actually creating change. And the reason why is because on a time we have impact on those who are in our immediate circles, our parents, our friends, our families, people that we went to school with. But with globalization now, that's actually not true. We have impact on everybody. I have impact still on my friends, parents and family, but I also have impact on you in the audience. I have impact on someone in India, someone that I'll never meet because globalization connects us in ways that we'll never be aware of. And Given that all of us here at the moment are from Australia, we're all in a developed country, we're in an additional position of privilege. It's the fact that even if you make $20,000 a year, which some university students do make, that places you in the top 10% of the wealthiest individuals in the world. And I recently stumbled across this website, How Many Slaves Work For You? I have 17 slaves working for me, and I like to think that I'm this social change advocate doing all this good. And there I am with 17 slaves working for me. It's in the way that we do fundamentally basic things like consuming products. Um, the fact that we have electricity right now, that means that we all have slaves working for us. It's knowledge like this that for me is really hard to grasp. And it doesn't really matter at the end of the day, all of these little things that we worry about on a day-to-day -day basis, whether or not we're popular online, whether or not we're getting the grades. This is the information that my generation knows. It's the fact that climate change exists. It's the fact that poverty exists. It's the fact that within Australia, people who identify as being homosexual still don't have the same civil liberties as those of us who identify as being heterosexual. And what I think about often is, would I prefer to not know any of this? Would I prefer to live in ignorance? As the saying goes, ignorance is bliss. But is it really? And is that even a fair statement to make these days? How is it people cannot know this information, especially people like us within this room? We all go through school, we all have access to the basic fundamental human rights. How is it that we cannot know? And once we do know, how can we actually turn away? How is this something that we can turn away from? I might have many, many sleepless nights where I wonder to myself, what would my life be if I didn't know any of this? But the difference is, I do know all of this. I do know what some of the big issues that we face are. And I have these expectations. I don't think that it's right. I don't think that it's okay that someone else is suffering just so that I can live as I do today. I don't think it's right that some people don't get to live in the same way that we do, that some people don't have access to clean drinking water and things like that. And I guess that's what's hard about being 20 and knowing all of these things and knowing that that's what drives me is that I'm not willing to settle for any less. But what makes me really proud is that I come from a generation where there are many, many other individuals who also won't settle for any less, and we're the ones that are going to make change within the next generation. Thank you.